almost all the gold ends up coming out of the, the top three grooves here. There's a little spilling over into the next couple of grooves and that'll end up coming up out this groove right here. Now we've stopped everything so that we can uh, see the gold and the separation with the other lower specific gravity materials. We've got some real silvery material in there, we're not sure what it is. The gray stuff is probably pyrotite. And most of the gold comes out of the top groove. Come across the table. It just makes a real nice line of gold right down under the water bars and into the trough. Number one and number two high grade ports. Now when we're run, done running a couple two or three hundred pounds we've got to brush down the table because the gold hangs in the grooves and we'd be here all afternoon to get it so we brush it down and, and this is really where we get our strong strong line of gold. A good part of this is just smoke on the table. The big pieces have come down already. They're already down here. These are the bigger pieces from the from the ore. And then on up here, this is actually fairly coarse here as well. And then we get up here, and this is just very, very fine smoke, call it micron gold, call it flower gold. When we screen this, a good part of this will go through a 325 mesh screen. So there's that 325 minus. Now we're taking this uh, 325 mesh video through a little loop and I think that must be maybe 8 or 10 power and you can just see the edge of it there a little bit. Here are the results of our screen test. On the left is our 100 mesh plus. Next to that is 100 to 200 then 200 to 325 and here on the far right is our 325 minus. So you can see the, the variation in gold size the table captures and there's a little bit more than an ounce of gold here, so the table did a great job.
Okay, here's the number one uh, bucket that we got off the table. I plant, panned it down a little bit, but you can see in the sun, it's a pretty good showing there. A lot of fine gold. Again, this was from about 3,500 pounds of ore. So there's our button. So I'll get some of the slag knocked off and we'll take a look and get it weighed. All right, here's our button. I'm gonna get it weighed out here on our scale. And it comes in right, just under 16 grams. So it ended up being right about a quarter ounce a ton. <laughs> Got done running our sample and here's the gold we got so these guys had a pretty good sample you can see how fine the gold is in there there's a lot that's minus 200 mesh and probably some that's minus 300 mesh in there today I want to talk to you a little bit about the ball mills we sell and so I wanted to walk you through this 3x6 1 ton an hour ball mill as well as this 4x8 2 ton an hour ball mill so this is our 4x8 ball mill and it's designed to run 2 tons per hour at about a half to three quarter inch input and discharge about 50 to 60 mesh. The mill is designed to turn between 30 and 32 RPM and it weighs about 30,000 pounds when it's fully loaded with balls. To reduce the discharge size of the ball mill, the retention time needs to be increased. And this can be done by decreasing the throughput of material or by decreasing the flow of water through the ball mill. This is the drive mechanism for the ball mill. And this unit is run by a 40 horse, three phase electric motor the gearbox reduces the output of the motor to the correct spin for the ball mill. And we're looking at the jack shaft here that runs the bull gear which turns the ball mill. The studs on the side of the drum hold in the liners that are cast manganese for reduced wear on the drum. The ball mill is supported on each side by two large spherical roller bearings and the shaft that goes through the roller bearings are hollow to allow the input and discharge from the mill. This is the feed side of the mill, and as you can see, there's a scoop, so when the material enters 
the drum, it is scooped into the ball mill at an even rate. You can see the access door, which allows for input of a new charge of balls and can also be used to clean out the mill for replacement of the liners. Here is the discharge side of the ball mill and the material and slurry can be captured and then directed down onto a concentrator. This machine will process uh, one ton an hour at 65 mesh and you can actually process finer than that down to about 200 mesh but the throughput goes down. This is the feed side here. So you, you put your uh, three quarter to one inch minus in here in the scoop, goes into the ball mill. This has about a two ton charge of balls. The material works its way through the ball mill. It turns about 35 RPM with a water addition. The material works its way down through the ball mill and out the discharge here which would go on to uh, shaker tables for concentration. Here are the three different size balls we use and uh, you add equal amounts of each size ball when you first charge the mill and then as the, the balls wear you just keep putting in larger balls. Um, again it's about a two ton charge of balls. The machine empty weighs about 8,500 pounds with the charge of balls it weighs about 12,500 pounds. We'll take a look inside the ball mill now. And you can see it has cast armor lining the hole inside of the mill. This is the feed side. And across the mill, here is the discharge size side. And it has a grate to keep the balls in. And I don't know if you can see it from this angle, but there's an auger in there that screws the material back in, so only the finest material is able to exit the mill. Well, the mill weighs a little more than three tons, and you can see how easily I can turn the mill with just one hand. So it's a, a very smooth mill, not a lot of friction. It runs with a 25 horse, three phase motor. This jaw crusher can do between two and five tons per hour, depending on the size of the jaw gap. Once it's crushed, it comes down here onto this conveyor belt and comes up into this fine ore feeder here. And when you're running ore, you want it as fine as you can get it. So the, the close setting on the jaw crusher is perfect, right about that three quarter inch minus. This is just a holding bin for the crushed ore. There's a magnetic feeder down here that's adjustable so you can very nice and evenly control the feed rate from the fine ore hopper onto this conveyor belt that takes the crushed material from the jaw crusher up into this 24 by 16 inch hammer mill. This hammer mill has 24 hammers in it and starting here and wrapping all the way underneath 180 degrees is a screen and we laser cut slots that are about 0.8 millimeters and so as the hammer mill crushes the, the ore from the jaw crusher, it comes out here onto this pan at about 30 mesh minus. We run the hammer mill with a little bit of water to keep the dust down and to make a nice slurry down onto our shaker table here. The slurry comes down into this distributor trough. The white water bars here flow water down onto the shaker table. The material comes down over these grooves the gold and heavy material gets caught in the grooves. The shaker table brings the gold, sulfide, silver, whatever you're trying to concentrate, down here onto the cleaning plane and down here into one number one and number two concentrates. There's a number three concentrates bin here where most of your sulfides are going to go. There will be a splitter in there that you can adjust the cutoff between the number three middlings and the number four tailings. And then the tailings will flow down into this spiral classifier where the, the heavy material, the larger pieces, settle down through this basin and get augered and dewatered. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video of our two ton per hour walkthrough and uh, let us know if you have any questions or comments. You can give us a call or email us, all of which is in the description below. So thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.